once you have this 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 fullness of education, as it were, what what does it do? It 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 does what the Greeks were always trying to do, but were frustrated in doing it because of the whole problem of sin, death, and the devil that Christianity is able to to resolve. It it puts us in a harmonious relationship into the cosmos. Now we know what our place is in this cosmos. Uh, there's incredible humble feeling, uh, a, a humble orientation towards our God. Um, true education should always put us on our knees. True education should always evoke a sense of praise and awe and wonder. Jonathan Edwards, um, in his work, The End for Which God Created the World, pointed out that you know, heaven is not static. It's not like we just you know, go off and hang out on a cloud for a while. Um, he draws from Gregory of Nyssa's Epictetus, this idea that we heaven is this journey, this eternal journey, where we we eternally traverse the infinite majesty of God's glory. God is so glorious that it would literally take an eternity to exhaust that glory. So there's never a time where there's no more glory to discover and to enjoy. We're always learning more and more and more about God, which is awakening more and more awe and wonder. And I like to think that classical Christian education is beginning that journey. It's beginning that infinite, eternal journey of, of traversing God's beauty and majesty, where we begin to discover his glory now, but this is, this is nothing. As Lewis would say at the last book of the uh, Narnia series, this is but the title page of the grand story to come.